Hi, welcome back to Geometry. We're beginning Chapter 8. This section, 8.1, is on the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. And you remember from previous chapters that converse means um, it backwards. Now, we've done a lot of work with the Pythagorean Theorem, so this section should be fairly quick. Our objective here is to use the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. If you know the length of any two sides of a right triangle, then you can find the third side by using the Pythagorean Theorem. And if you take a look at this picture here, you know that the legs of the two sides that make the right angle on the hypotenuse is the side that is always across from the right angle. And in a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side because it's across from the largest angle. So theorem 8.1, the Pythagorean theorem. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So if this triangle, triangle ABC, is a right triangle, then the first leg, this is leg one, and this is leg two, leg one squared plus leg two squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. A Pythagorean triple, which again we've discussed a few times, is a set of non-zero whole numbers for a, b, and c that satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a Pythagorean triple, those are whole numbers. No decimals, no radicals, whole numbers. So here are some common Pythagorean triples. We've talked about this one. 3, 4, 5, but then there's also 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. These are not the only Pythagorean triples, but these are common ones. And this one especially, this one you see a lot. And we've actually talked about this concept as well. If you multiply each number in a Pythagorean triple by the same whole number, then the three numbers that result also form a Pythagorean triple. So for example, if I multiply all of these by 2, I get 6, 8, 10. If I multiply them all by 3, I get 9, 12, 15. Each of these is a resulting Pythagorean triple. 9 squared plus 12 squared is equal to 15 squared. So you know how to do this already. Pause this video for a minute and set this up. We're looking for the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle, this right triangle, ABC. We know it's a right triangle that's given to us. So pause the video, find the length of the hypotenuse of triangle ABC, and then determine does this form a Pythagorean triple. So hopefully you set your equation up this way, that the smallest leg squared, 20, plus the middle leg, the, the longest leg, I guess, squared, 21 squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, C squared. So 20 squared plus 21 squared is 841 is equal to C squared. In order to bring this squared to the other side of your equation, you find the square root. 841 is a perfect square. It is 29. So the length of this hypotenuse is 29. Do the sides form a Pythagorean triple? They sure do, right? Because these are all whole numbers, yes. All three sides are whole numbers. of triangle ABC are whole numbers. And that's what a Pythagorean triple is. Good. So now we're going to find the length of a leg. And again, I believe you already know how to do this. We want to find the value of x. x in this case is the length of this longer leg of this right triangle. The hypotenuse is 20 and the shorter leg is 8. Take a moment and write your equation using the Pythagorean Theorem. We're going to leave this one in simplest radical form. So you know already that this is not going to be a perfect square. Take a minute. Set this up. So you should have set this up as 8 squared plus x squared is equal to 20 squared. 8 squared is 64 plus x squared is equal to 400. You would subtract 64 to find that x squared is equal to 336. In order to get the x all alone, you want to do the square root of 336. Well, as we've practiced in class in both geometry and in algebra 2, 
you want to simplify this radical by taking out pairs. Pairs are squares. So let's figure out what pairs are inside there. Inside of 336, I know 336 is divisible by 2. And again by 2. And again by 2. And again by 2. And this is going to give me 21, which is 7 and 3. In order to factor this, break these down into prime factors, I just kept dividing. I knew 336 ended in a 6, so I knew I could divide it by 2, and then I went again and divided by 2, and again and divided by 2, and again divided by 2, till I finally got 21, which is no longer divisible by 2, and the factors of 21 are 7 and 3. Every pair is a square, so I can take out 1 for every 2 that are in there. So it's 2 and another 2, and what's left inside is 7 times 3, which is 21. So, my simplified solution here is 4 square root of 21. That is the value of x. So, x is equal to 4 square root of 21. So, we can use the converse, the flipped around version of the Pythagorean theorem. So, if the sum of the squares of the lengths of two sides of a triangle is equal to the lengths of the third side, then it is a right triangle. So this is proving that a triangle is a right triangle. It's saying that if when you plug all the numbers in it's equal, if it's equal, then it's a right triangle. So you can use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to determine whether a triangle is a right triangle. So let's try it. A triangle has side lengths of 85, 84, and 13. Is the triangle a right triangle? Well, the Pythagorean theorem is the shortest side squared, so 13 squared plus the medium, 84 squared, is equal to 85 squared. Well, that's the question here. Is it equal? I don't know. We have to figure it out. So you want to simplify this to determine whether or not this is equal. If they are equal, then you know it's a right triangle. That's what the converse of the Pythagorean theorem tells us. So 13 squared is 169 plus 84 squared is 7,056. Is it equal? Is it? To, is it equal? To 85 squared? Well, 85 squared is 7,225. So, when I add these together, 169 and 7,056, I get, so, these are equal equal. Because they are equal, this is a right triangle. If they were not equal, it wouldn't be a right triangle. So because they are, these are equal, it is a right triangle. These next two theorems that we're going to talk about allow you to determine whether a triangle is acute or obtuse. So we know if when you square the shorter side and add it to the square of the middle length side, if it's equal, to the third side squared, then you know it's a right triangle. However, theorem 8.3 and 8.4 help us to determine whether it's obtuse or acute. So, you always want to put the longest one first in these. If the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle is greater than, so this is greater than, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides, then the triangle is obtuse. So always put the longest one first. If it's greater than, then it's obtuse. The next theorem, theorem 8.4, it's the same idea. If the square of the longest side of the triangle is, in this case, it's less than the sum of the square of the lengths of the other two sides, then the triangle is acute. So again, you always want to put the longest one first when you're doing this. And you want to determine, is it greater than, less than, or equal to? And that will tell us whether or not it's acute, obtuse, or right. So, if the longest side squared is less than the shorter two sides squared added together, then it's acute. Let's try a few. If a triangle has the side lengths of 6, 11, and 14, is it acute, obtuse, or right? So, remember what I just said a minute ago. You always want to look at the longest one. So, we want to put the longest one first. 14 squared is what? Now, I'm looking for the symbol that's going to go in here. 2, 
6 squared plus 11 squared. I want to determine what's going to go in here. Is it going to be greater than, less than, or equal to? If it's greater than, it'll be obtuse. If it's less than, it's acute. If it's equal to, it's right. So let's simplify these numbers to determine what we're going to get. So 14 squared, well, that's 196. What is it to, I don't know yet, 36 plus 121? So I want to add those together. 196 is what to 36 plus 121? That's going to give me 157. What symbol would go in there? 196 compares to 157 because it is greater. If it's greater than, this is obtuse. If the longest side squared is greater than the other two sides squared added together, then it's obtuse. Let's try the next one. A triangle has side lengths of 7, 8, and 9. Is it acute, obtuse, or right? So again, we want to pick the longest side first. We always want to start with the longest one. 9 squared. What is it to 7 squared plus 8 squared? So you know 9 squared is 81. What is it to? Is it greater than, less than, or equal to? 49 plus 64. Well, 81, how does it compare to the sum of 49 and 64? When I add 49 and 64, I get 113. So 81 is less than. If it's less than, then it's acute. So a triangle with these side lengths, 7, 8, and 9, would be acute because the longest side squared is less than the sum of the squares of the other two. We'll practice this tomorrow in class.